Good morning, friends. Hello. Welcome. Happy Monday. It is so great to see all of you this morning. Today, we're going to talk about a powerhouse of an item that you can eat, you can put on salads, you can saute, and it is the great mushroom. We're going to talk about an assortment of mushrooms. These are extreme immune defenders, and we're going to, I'm, I, I'm going to share all the good stuff behind mushrooms today, um, specifically on how to utilize them in uh, helping support your immune system when it comes to antiviral activity, as well as helping to support your overall immunity. So welcome all of you. It looks like YouTube might be buffering or Instagram might be buffering. So I want to really encourage all of you to stick with me through the news part of our show to dig into the powerhouse uh, and benefits of mushrooms because it's going to be amazing. If you are on the replay or catching me, this is a live show. Um, the first part is news, COVID related news. If you don't like that, you can fast forward and I will put in the show notes uh, a point where we begin the, the information about mushrooms. So you can just click, check in the description box, click and go to where you want to go. Okay, so friends, we, the world has surpassed 23 million cases. Um, that actually happened Saturday and yesterday and um, part of today, we're getting numbers already. And it's just exponential growth. So every week we're going to see a million added and it'll get faster and faster as the rates of this virus spread. Uh, US-based cases, we're, we're slow going. We've had um, a dip. We're now below 50,000 positive cases um, a day, but that average is related to a lot of testing challenges. And so the dysfunction of the testing um, access and uh, still supply chain issues is one of the reasons behind that. But still, we have 5.79 million cases, and we are almost, we're, quick, we're approaching 180,000 fatalities. Um, so I want to highlight that for all of us today, um, that it continues to be quite a fatal um, uh, a disease here in the U.S. And in fact, over the weekend, Florida um, surpassed 600,000 cases, and California posted 146 fatalities just yesterday, Texas 104. And we now have three states, California, Florida, and Texas, that all have over half a million uh, positive cases. So um, I do want to highlight some of the things that are happening um, here stateside that's very much concerning. And then we'll talk about some global uh, scenarios. Uh, in California specifically, they have had a total of 29,260 healthcare workers ha get infected with COVID. And one of the still, one of the challenges that they have is that they don't have enough personal protective equipment. So they're still, to this day, it's August 24th, they're still being told to reuse PPE. Many of them it are being, it's being siphoned in terms of who all is going to be using, what all are they going to be wearing? And there are still a lot of uh, challenges for the healthcare workers. And cases in California are still climbing. Like California is at six, 663,000 positive cases. They posted, on average, they're averaging about 65 to 7,000 new cases on a daily basis. And there's a certain percentage of those who end up being hospitalized, which is straining the system but it's also straining the requirement of PPE. So that I think we're gonna hear more of um, along with the testing issues that we have. But globally, I wanna to talk to you all about Mexico. Uh, Mexico came out with a big claim. And for many of you who are much like me, tuned into eating the non-SAD diet, the non-standard American diet, uh, which consists of a lot of processed foods and sodas, Mexico went out and made a big claim. Uh, blaming Coke for the fact that they have such a bad COVID situation. Uh, and this is an interesting statistic. And there is obviously a very big element when it comes down to underlying health conditions like diabetes and some heart disease and degenerative diseases that actually can be prevented by a healthy diet and healthy lifestyle choices. Um, one of the things that I did not know in reading this one uh, article was that the average Mexican consumes. 163 liters of Coke a year. That's like 
half a liter a day. <laughs> That's an insane amount of sugar. And, um, I, you know, we live here in Atlanta and this is where Coke is headquartered. They actually have a museum. When I was in college, we used to come up here a lot and it was really exciting because you could taste the Cokes from around the world and Coke does taste having traveled and, and experienced, uh, how foods taste different, like chocolates, different, in different countries. Well, Coke similarly has different, um, flavor profiles and different ingredients. Some of it's based on requirements to not have certain additives, but also a different palate. Um, and so the Mexicans uh, consume a massive amount of Coke. And so the country came out and blamed Coke for the COVID situation. I mean, that is definitely one part of it, but you know, truly you are what you eat. And today we're gonna be talking about mushrooms in terms of what to eat to really help support your immune system and just overall health. I, I, I think mushrooms are, uh, a missing link for many of us dietarily when it comes to really helping support your body. So we'll dig in more into that, but as it's kind of interesting, <laughs> Mexico is blaming Coca-Cola. Um, but it is alarming that, uh, you know, how much Coke a, a, an average consumer, um, an average uh, citizen consumes. On the world front, um, Australia is dealing still with the second wave in Victoria. Um, and they had 17 fatalities yesterday. That is a record in Australia. And they are still in a lockdown status. Um, so that is something that we'll continue to monitor. Um, Sweden has uh, indicated that they expect that there will be a second wave in that country and that it'll be localized and not necessarily as full blown as it had been. They were the country that took very different measures and still had per capita, some of the highest rates of exposure. That country did not close down like some of the other countries. But also their diet, when it comes back to the diet, they eat things that are very similar to mushrooms that are very pro-immune uh, supportive. So I hope you're seeing kind of a trend here that a lot of what we can do is preventative, just globally health-wise in terms of making sure you're consuming the right nutrients, having the right lifestyle choices. And, you know, I don't use the word diet, I use lifestyle, and it's really just a way of life. And so if you can have a way of life that is primarily plant based, and very wholesome, very rich in nutrient and high density of fiber, and other good nutrients and minerals, then your body will benefit from that in a multitude of ways. So let's talk a little bit about what's happening here. Um, we are getting some specific information about some pockets of spread. Um, the, and they're, they're, you know, on Saturday, I posted about the Sturgis, that motorcycle rally that, that I actually saw, and I didn't get a chance to print it out, but I saw it was a chart that linked all of the different people, like they, they've identified where people went. And I think it's from cell phone use, you know, the GPS tracking that they had identified multiple states had people go to Sturgis. But what I found was interesting is there are no major dots, like not a big population of people from California or New Mexico or Colorado. Um, and so that'll be interesting to see if we see those states somewhat insulated from Sturgis outbreak. But there were literally, it just was spanned, particularly the Midwest, Texas, a lot of Florida. Um, and so I, 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 that'll be kind of interesting to see, but we definitely are, are going to get more numbers and more details as contact tracing comes in with regard to that community. But let's talk about universities. So Notre Dame, uh, last week they went digital. I had announced that, you know, they had an, a pocket of outbreak. So on Tuesday they went digital and on Friday, their student newspaper, there was an editorial article that literally pleaded with the university to quote, not make us write obituaries, you know, these student uh, editors and, and writers from the newspaper. And their article really was quite um, a critique of the meltdown on campus of contact tracing, testing, contact tracing, surveillance testing, and then isolation. And so the, this editorial article really, really put some pressure on the university. Uh, but I do want to highlight that in total, the campus has between grad, undergraduate and graduate students, there's just under 13,000 students. Currently, there's 408 positive cases on campus. Um, and that's just in 20 days of students uh, setting foot on campus in dorms and in classrooms. So Syracuse 
university, um, they ended up having a uh, situation last week where there's a big house party and they had made warnings that if students were caught um, hosting parties that were not socially distanced and exceeding the state guidelines, that they'd be making suspensions and they actually have names and have suspended students. Um, and then um, we now in total, I think Saturday we had, uh, let's see, on, as of Friday, we had 15 states that had uh, universities with cases. That now has more than doubled. We now have 36 states that have some degree of COVID on campus, COVID spread, COVID community oriented uh, contact. And the latest of the universities that we're just going to have to monitor, Holy Cross up in um, just outside of Mass uh, Boston, it's called Worcester. Um, they haven't even officially started school on campus, but apparently some kids had a huge off-campus party. And so, the, you know, that's another pocket that we're going to have to monitor. Um, but I do want to highlight some of these little pockets that we're seeing. Um, you know, it, just an example, for instance, outside of college. In Maine, I reported last week that there was a wedding reception. Um, the facility holds no more than 100, and it sounds like they capped out at 100 participants in the wedding reception. Currently, they have 53 confirmed cases from this wedding. The age range is four years old, had tested positive up to 78. Um, and half of the cases um, of those uh, confirmed, have, they actually had not attended the wedding. And one of them that was hospitalized, she died. She didn't even attend the wedding. And so that is just an example. And this is for, literally four days after the reception, people actually started to experience symptoms. Um, and 13% 13, 13 of these individuals who have tested positive that did attend, they, um, they were symptomatic within four days of exposure at the, at the reception. Um, now, obviously, sometimes wedding events and stuff like that, they're stuffed days before. So it might really not be four, four full days. You know, maybe it was seven days. You know, they got there, there was rehearsal dinner or whatnot. So there's definitely some exposure. Now, on the front of parties, apparently, this is the way you party up in the Hamptons for those of us watching. Most of us are not doing this. But the Hamptons um, is really big into medical concierge and services. And some of my um, uh, classmates and naturopathic uh, trained clinicians, some of them have gone into medical concierge. And that's really popular in certain pockets where there's a lot of financial wealth to do that. But um, the Hamptons, um, some of these medical concierge companies are members only. And they're currently now primarily being contracted to do rapid COVID tests at Hamptons parties. And um, there were several interviewed in an interesting article I read in one of my journals and, and talked about how some of the guests are paying for $500. Oh, you need paper. We, I, okay. We should have some in the green pocket up there. Um, and the, hold on, you guys. Construction papers in the movie room. Okay. Gabriel's working on a project. Okay, so um, so this is crazy. So some of these party goers are um, swapping out, <laughs> the article talked about, they're swapping out hors d'oeuvres for COVID tests. But the cost of some of these tests is $500 a pop, uh, which is insane. Like, I don't know a party that has that type of <laughs> contraction to get swabbed uh, and why somebody would pay for that. But that is just kind of an upper level, um, but still there's no deterrent from people having parties. And the reality is that these tests don't necessarily mean that they're catching everybody. There's inaccuracies um, and it's just, it's just mind blowing. So, um, so little girl blue 46, but aren't we all pretty much going to be exposed? Can't really live in a bubble, right? Um, well, so, you know, unless you're pretty wealthy and don't have to go anywhere, you know, that, that is a traditional argument. Um, and unfortunately there's a lot surrounding that where it doesn't, yes, there's probably likelihood we're all going to get exposed, but right now exposure could be deadly and it might not be deadly for you. 
it might be deadly for people you are exposed to. And those people might be at risk. And a lot of times people aren't walking around with their medical cards out or their medical charts saying, I have all these underlying health conditions. Most of us don't talk about that with people we do or do not know. So that whole, you know, idea of, you know, casually saying we should all be in a bubble, we all need to be taking precautions. And, you know, it doesn't matter if there's assumed risk, like we're all going to get it. That just, we can't have that attitude. And so little girl blue, yes, there's definitely potential exposure, but right now, because we don't have a vaccine and we don't have really a really solid therapeutic protocol, we're still sometimes throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks. Um, we all have to take preemptive measures. We all have to socially distance. We should all be staying home and not partying. We shouldn't be going to receptions. We shouldn't have, you know, large scale gatherings. Um, you know, I think it's interesting if we observe how, you know, a press conference is hosted and there's social distancing or there are announcements being made and we're not, you know, it's all digital, then we need to take heed. If that's how certain parties are, are, are limiting their exposure, we all need to follow suit. So yes, you can't live in a bubble. I'm a parent. I totally know. I'd love to put my child in bubble wrap to protect him. But we're not dealing with just a cold or common flu. This is a novel virus, and we sure as heck don't know a whole lot about it. Um, and because of that, um, one of the things that came out over the weekend, and it it is it's a non non issue. You know, the FDA approved uh, you know, authorized plasma treatment as a therapeutic. We're already doing that. So there are you know there's remdesivir. There's another drug that's in a clinical trial, and then we have the plasma treatments, but we don't have anything across the board um, other than like blood thinners and things like that, that they're trying to throw at people and putting, you know, putting people prone, but there's just so much, so much more involved. Um, but yes, the wealthy do seem to be having a different experience. Um, but you know, there are a lot of folks that if they can, um, if they can stay at home, they need to, and there's no need to be having a party. And, you know, uh, Freddie uh, Barnberg says, I wish everybody took this seriously. Absolutely. And, and I need to clarify that. So we just can't be nonchalant with, you know, oh, we're all going to get exposed. That just, we're beyond that community spread and people aren't getting tests and they're not taking their tests and they're, they're having, um, you know, fear about the nasal swap. You know what? If you've had a flu test, you're totally fine. I mean, you know, they, we've done that before. That nasal swabbing is not anything new. It's just a um, challenge to folks actually following suit and doing the right thing. And, you know, it's fear based. And we also have to remember that there are parties at play outside of the country trying to dispel our ability to be united and take the right social me measures to prote protect our public safety. So that's my little soapbox. And I, I just can't, I can't set aside, I can't set aside and watch, you know, some comments like that, that are potentially destructive and they're fatal. I mean, they, we, we are now beyond just making decisions for yourselves. And that includes having backyard parties, includes outdoor events where there is a big gathering. And if you are going to be doing those events, you need to be wearing masks and require those. And, you know, there's no indication that like this Hamptons party or even this main uh, wedding reception and certainly Sturgis, people were actually taking it seriously, you know. And so there's a false sense, I think, of security, too. When we look at, oh, we're doing, you know, the temperature taking. Well, a fever doesn't always indicate that you're totally free of COVID and it doesn't indicate that you are not symptomatic. Um, so that is kind of a false sense of security. And then also some of these tests, these rapid tests, we now know, you know, there's being, there are, there are many of them that are being assessed in terms of the accuracy point. So, you know, whether you get a false positive or false negative, either way, a false result is just, it's a, it's, it's fallible. It's, it's, it's inaccurate. And it's, that now becomes an unsafe point. So I think we just continue, we need to continue with the basics. Okay. Wash your hands you know, be very cautious of your day to day activities, limit your exposure, um, you know, order things online, have things shipped to your home when you can um, try to work from home. If you can, if you're an essential worker, make sure you're taking all the measures and wearing your gear and, you know, protecting your eyes. I had to go out over the weekend. I am loving my laminator machine. By the way, I'm in full 
mommy homeschool mode and have all these activities I've laminated printed out. There's all these free resources online and I am like burning through ink and laminating. So I had to run out to office depot and um, you know, again, like people are out. This gentleman was not wearing a mask. He, he was, okay. He was wearing a mask, but this on your chin, having a bunch down here does not qualify as covering your mouth and your nose. And so, you know, the challenge here is that people, even when you are taking all the right measures, people are not. And so we have to account for that. And we have to know that there are people that are going to be idiots in the store or, you know, walk in with a mask, take it off and then put it back on when they're checking out. I've seen that as well. Um, so you just have to be really cautious and, you know, we, we have to take care of ourselves to take care of other people. And part of that taking care of other people means doing the right thing, making healthy, good choices. Um, okay. So Darlene says we cancel my daughter's wedding reception. We will get married. She'll get married at church with immediate family. She will Facebook stream to invite guests to reception will be next spring. Yeah. And that's actually what we did. And I'm still nervous. Like April, I haven't even sent out a change of the date. Cause I'm like, I think it's not going to happen. Um, you know, because who knows what's going to happen between now and December in terms of the cold and flu season ramping up with COVID and we still are not, you know, hospital workers don't have PPE. They could be spreading it. If, I mean, it's just one of these things, like, let's go back to California. If healthcare workers are not protected, they themselves aren't protected, but you are not protected if you are a consumer of a healthcare service. So we just have have so many, so many, uh, challenges. And I see little girl, bull. I'm I'm not trying to get on you. I'm sorry if I, I'm not picking on you. She says, I'm definitely taking this seriously, but there seems no info to really and truly rely on. There is, there is, I promise you there is. And I try my best to articulate that for all of you on a daily basis. Um, but she asked a good question. Also, if we do get sick, how do we get the hospitals to follow the protocols they are produce? That are producing great results. So they generally they are. Um, you know, it's the challenge is they they're gonna be wearing masks, but you don't know oh, Instagram's buffering. You don't know if that's a mask they've worn for five or seven days. So you know, that's like another issue is they are taking per precautions. But this is where, this is what I've heard. And then we'll talk about mushrooms. Um, hold on, Instagram. Eh, my internet might be issues. Okay, so it looks like Instagram's buffering. But I'm going to keep going on YouTube because everybody on Instagram usually is on YouTube. Um, this is where I see the meltdown. It's not the ER or the ICU. They're buttoned up. It is when you go and you get an x-ray. It's when, and I, I have some stories on this, when you go and get an x-ray, when you go and um, get an echo, if you are having a, um, you know, CT scan or some sort of testing method or, or not method, but you're actually having a test. Those are the folks that I'm concerned about. I've had multiple, multiple patients and friends that I know and people that I know that are working in that space where you know, for instance, you, an individual went and got, had, you know, was having some heart challenges. Question is, is it COVID? Is it an autoimmune? Is it underlying? Or is it just normal kind of, you know, aging? Um, the tech was not wearing a mask and complaining about not wearing masks. Now that is problematic. That's a situation where I would, I would literally, they're not wearing a mask. I would, I would not go in. Um, and so that's the type of scenario is you just say, I want a different room and I want a different tech. And you talk to a, a, a support manager because that is you're in the healthcare field. Everybody knows you need to do this. So that's one approach to deal, dealing with that. The other is, um, you know, uh, some of these outpatient testing facilities, some are in the hospital setting, some are in, you know, the kind of medical clinic settings where um, one group is running through more than more than they should patient turnover. So for instance, they're doing um, x-ray. So it's an x-ray tech, you know, x-ray tech company and seeing 40 patients in a, a, you know, four and a half hour timeframe does not allow for proper cleaning 
of the material supplies in the room. And the fact that they're turning over is something where you might want to be able to ask, and you wouldn't know this, but I'm, I'm recommending this. If you do ask, how many patients are you seeing on a daily basis? So if they're open for a period of time and they say 40 or 50, they are pumping through people and they might not be actively cleaning. And the other thing we need to know is in those types of settings, everybody's trying to ramp up for what they've lost. We've all lost we've lost time, we've lost, uh, you know, the ability to bill, all of these things, people are and companies, restaurants, you know, turning over tables, you know, kind of not adhering to the social distancing. I witnessed that as I was driving to my office depot and saw a restaurant, and they just had everybody lined up in their little porch, but there was no social distancing. Um, so you just need to be aware of that and ask questions, but definitely listen to that little voice. And if somebody is not wearing a mask in a medical facility, you stop, you get up and you go talk to a manager because that's the other thing people, yeah, Instagram's freezing. Um, you know, the, the, the people that work there, management, th that is, that's gross negligence. That is, a, you know, in, in my world, that'd be a fireable offense. Um, you know, public safety is number one and anybody in healthcare who respects that, uh, you know, whatever they believe outside, they can't bring that into the office space. And that is a detriment to the safety of uh, the patients. And also when we're dealing with like heart challenges or anxiety and stress, you're already going to be anxious about a test. And now you've got somebody not wearing a mask in your face, complaining about mask wearing. That's just so insane. So that would be some recommendations um, that I would make. Okay. Um, okay. So I want to talk to you guys about mushrooms. Let me just mark my time. Let's see. In, I don't know. Instagram is buffering. Okay. So 26, 35. Okay. So let's talk about mushrooms and their amazing power to bolster and support your immunity. Um, we have so many different ways of consuming mushrooms. It's not even funny. I love to consume these types, this is, I think these are little button mini portobello mushrooms, but there's white mushrooms. You can get oyster mushrooms. You get all types of mushrooms. You can have them like this and the regular, like they, this needs to get cleaned off. It's got a little dirt on it. Um, you can have these dried, you can have them flaked so you can add them to your foods. There's a lot of different ways to approach consuming mushrooms. There's also the more intense route, which is using my community. And I have links to both of these. We sell these in my online full script store. So you get 10 auto 10% 10 off, but there's a liquid and then there's the capsule. This delivers a power punch of a lot of mushrooms. I can tell you, I can't get access to these mushrooms. This is a little capsule, um, you know, in a supermarket or even, you know, specialty um, center. So for instance, chaga, mitake, reishi, cordyceps. Royal Sun, Belize, uh, and in 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 Okatake, uh, Misima, Turkey Tail, Oyster Mushroom, Lion Mane. We've got Oregon Reishi, uh, more versions of Shiitake and, and Mitake, and then the Polypores. These are extremely potent, so you can combine consuming your portobellos, your buttons, and all of the you know mushrooms that you can consume on a daily basis that are raw, but then also up it by adding additional blends of mushrooms. But I wanna share with you why mushrooms are very powerful at supporting your immune system. And for some reason, Instagram is totally buffering. Okay, so some of the things that mushrooms do, they deliver nutrients and, and minerals and vitamins that are essential. And it happens to be one of the only, only substances, only live, foods in your supermarket that you can buy that will give you vitamin D. So if you are a vegan or a vegetarian and you don't want to get vitamin D that's derived from an animal source, which is very common, your mushroom intake is going to be your vitamin D, your natural vitamin D method, your delivery. And that's a very potent source and very potent power. When we look at, we already know science is showcasing with COVID, the moderate and severe cases of COVID, they all categorically have very low levels of vitamin D. So vitamin D is needed by every cell in your body and it's part of your immune system and it ramps up your immunity. 
I love all the mushroom emojis, you guys, on the live chat. I love it. It reminds me of Mario Brothers. Um, so mushrooms are very good. They're dense, too. You get a lot of fiber. So they're very good for um, adding fiber. There's prebiotics in here. This fiber is going to feed good, healthy bacteria in your gut. And mushrooms just are a very powerful source of nutrients. The other thing that mushrooms contain is selenium. And selenium is great for regulating your immune system. It's also critical for helping keep your blood sugars balanced and keeping your pancreas optimized. So when we look at some of the symptoms with COVID, one of the symptoms is uh, for some folks that have no diabetic history, they have pre-diabetes and pre-diabetic um, levels. And then sometimes folks go on full into diabetes during this episode, the inflammatory response kicks up the diabetes and they end up becoming in or develop a condition called ketoacidosis. So the, the blood and self, we have a more acidic environment. And one of the things that selenium does is it helps to regulate the body's ability to absorb and metabolize insulin. So it helps support regulation of your blood sugar. So for any of my pre-diabetics and diabetics out there, mushrooms are a very good complement. I always recommend if you have a, if you are diabetic or pre-diabetes, you want to also add your multi-minerals. And I don't see my multi-minerals here on my desk, but multi-minerals are critical. But when we're talking about food first, which is always my philosophy for all of you new joining, I've gotten a lot of flack that I'm not talking about food a lot, <laughs> but I do. I talk about food all the time. Mushrooms are going to be a good source of selenium and selenium. Also, you can find that in Brazil nuts, but it's another option and another catalog of nutrient density that you can absorb into your body. Selenium is really critical in helping regulate and support your immune system. So when we're dealing with autoimmunity, we definitely find that there are going to be things that you need and mushrooms are one of them. They also are in the fungal category. They actually are very powerful for bolstering your, your microbiota, counter to what a lot of people think. They think they're gonna have candida outbreaks if they eat mushrooms, and that's actually the opposite of what occurs. So those are very, very potent in selenium. The other thing, that mushrooms deliver are three core vitamin B uh, compounds. So we find that vitamin B is very critical and crucial for your body's ability to regulate your immunity. It is also part of the detox process. And a lot of folks that have the methylation MTHFR, the gene defect where they're not methylating, they're not detoxing properly, there's a lack of converting folic acid and B12 into the right power source. This is where mushrooms come into play. They're in the right form as a food base, food form, and they actually help support your body's response to stress. And they also will help provide the ability for your body to produce energy from protein, carbohydrates, and fats. Now, this is something we don't really talk a lot about, about vitamin B, and in the way vitamin Bs function, but some of these nutrients, these three Bs that mushrooms give you, and again, you get this in taking the, my community, see all those beautiful mushrooms. Um, I will say mushrooms are often the harder plant or, you know, kind of like live food to, to have access to. And so this is where I really do think we need to pair up both what you can get in your, you know, as a consumer that's easy locally, and I saw some folks like Mama Bee's Place says, our son just found cauliflower mushroom in the woods. Um, and that is something, you know, I cannot say that I'm a mushroom connoisseur. I wouldn't know a good mushroom or an, un an unhealthy or an unsafe mushroom, a toxic mushroom, if I were to go on a hike. But some people are very well, well versed. And that's awesome because they do occur in woods. Um, but you can also complement that with taking the liquid or the, the compounded capsule. But mushrooms, with when it comes to these B vitamins, these Bs actually help your body metabolize fat, 
carbohydrates and protein better. And a lot of times people have protein deficiency is a big factor. So they don't have all the right nutrients or enzymes to break the protein down. And then the other thing, and that can affect our kidney function, it can affect our ability to grow hair and our nails and our skin. The other thing that is a factor is our inability to break down fat. So I get a lot of emails from folks that say I have gallbladder issues, gallstones, I've got gallbladder attack, or I find that I just feel like my, uh, my, my digestive is my digestive system is bogged down. We actually do stool sampling. I haven't done that in a few months with COVID, but a lot of times I do that with, with patients in my clinic and we will find that they lack the ability to break down fat. And so there's a lipase dysfunction. So lipase is an enzyme that breaks down your fat. Mushrooms deliver the B vitamin that actually synthesizes that. And so it's a precursor to your body's productive process of fat breakdown. And that's really critical too, because when we look at, you know, fat, it's not just like body fat, there's all different types of fats, but some of them, some of these fats are steroidal, they are needed to be broken down and either processed out or used for building hormones. Um, and we need all of the right nutrients to, to do that. And what we see, particularly when we get mushrooms and these B vitamins in our body every day, um, you will find that you're increasing your energy process and metabolically you're more you're more efficient. So metabolic efficiency is the healthiest place to be. You want to be humming and operating as a well-oiled, a, a functional, but optimized functional engine. And that whole process of breaking down fats and proteins and carbohydrates is the critical point of that energy source. So you want to be able to, to get and break open and utilize the energy, meaning carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. So I think that is a, an excellent reason. Another reason that probably is lesser known of why you want to eat some mushrooms. Now, the other thing that we see in uh, an assortment of mushrooms is they have an amazing ability to support our gut and our digestive process. So they give more good uh, prebiotic fibers. They also deliver good nutrients to support our digestive process. And then in turn, there are some antimicrobial properties that these mushrooms contain. And there's a lot of research. I as too much to list, but there's a lot of research that has been done over the decades of the benefits mushrooms play in their antimicrobial antiviral properties. So when we're looking at keeping our bodies and our immune systems aligned in a healthy way to eradicate a cold bug or flu bug, or even, you know, a viral invasion, like we're all dealing with this pandemic, it becomes really critical that we process and consume foods that will support our gut and our digestive process. It's our heart. It's the heart of our immunity is the heart of our detox process. And a big element of us feeling optimized and lowering our inflammation comes from taking care of the gut. So those are some reasons why it's my little advertisement to eat your mushrooms today. But really, it is something that um, and I, I will tell you this, like I, I love mushrooms, and I sneak them in in a lot of different ways. You can saute them, you can, um, you can do like a sh I love shallots with mushrooms. So there's this really nice flavor. You can chop them up and freeze them. And um, so that's something that you can think about doing is when you do get them, you can have them in a dried form and chop them up and put them in soups. Um, when I do my own bone broth, I will put mushrooms in there. And so I want those nutrients to leach into and get absorbed and be a part of my bone broth. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use mushrooms. They taste great with eggs. If you are an egg consumer, you know, scrambled eggs or egg omelets. Um, but they're also great raw over uh, spinach salad and some of the other greens, you know, arugula and microgreens that you might be consuming. So I hope that is helpful. Um, Donna says, I needed to hear the protein info. Uh, it's so fantastic. Mushrooms are great. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. And they are, Terrence says they are great uh, for meat replacements. And actually, 
you know, the big portobellos, people will um, put those on the grill and the, oh, Daisy wants to say hi. Hi, Daisy. Hi, puppy. You want to say hi to everybody? Come on. Come here. Ah, oh, Daisy wants to say hi. Daisy's part of, oh, you're all wet. Daisy's part of show and tell today for Gabriel. Uh, they're doing family photos today, right? And he picked the family photo with Daisy in it. Oh, she's such a good girl. You're such a good girl. Um, so, and one of the things that I, I really want to recommend is for you guys to try out mushrooms that you might not have experienced before um, and see how you like them. Um, a lot of times mushrooms look a little funkier, but they taste great. And depending on the preparation is uh, a big part of... Um, how well you'll like, you know, the, the taste and, and if you like them. So definitely consider, you know, check out uh, Pinterest and other sources for really good recipes. I know YouTube here, they also have a lot of good cooking channels. So I, I'm not, you know, the, the cooking expert that's going to give you all the ways to use a mushroom, but they are, they can be consumed in a lot of different unique ways, right? Yes. Oh, Daisy loves her little scratchies. Um, Okay, so a question, how many mushrooms can we possibly eat in a day? It kind of depends on, on what you feel like. You know, like in a salad, I'll have six or seven of these. I get really liberal. And then if you like chop them up, um, it uh, often in, when I'm cooking, I treat the mushrooms like I do onions, you know, when you chop them up and then you can saute them. Um, and they will open up really nicely in different stews. Oh, our other puppy, Mina's coming. Hi, Mina. Let's probably go visit with our doggies. Hi, puppy girl. Um, okay, so do frozen mushrooms have sufficient nutrients? Yes, they do. Um, raw mushroom is not good. Can't digest, better to cook. Um, it depends on each person. Um, but, you know, the... And I actually checked this out when I was starting my spring garden. You can actually buy... They're like little wood things or dirt that you can grow your own mushrooms. I haven't gone, I haven't been that adventurous, but it's definitely something I would consider doing. Um, we just had so much going on in setting up our garden, but you can, you can do that. And I think if I were to do mushrooms, I would probably grow them inside to minimize any type of exposure to, you know, animals, <laughs> they, they will, you know, that's the other thing. Animals do eat mushrooms and that is medicinal uh, when it comes to different animal groups they'll graze on mushrooms. Um, organic, yes, I would definitely do organic, uh, unless you know the source. Some of the different um, companies that I have consumed from, they actually are very descriptive. I mean, you know, mushrooms don't need a lot of care, like your, um, your other nutrient or your other uh, veggies and fruits. So that's a little, the, the, the way they're grown is very different. Um, Let's see. Aviva says mushroom, cabbage, kale, onion soup. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Um, what are the best types of mushrooms? There's a, a whole assortment. I listed them earlier. You can check out my community. They've got the full list of them. But reishi, shiitake, um, you know, those are really common. But there's so many other ones. And there are polyspores as well. Those are considered mushrooms. Um, and, you know, as far as mushrooms, just try, try to have five to seven, eight or nine on a daily basis. And you can kind of break that up, but it's definitely something, you know, also I don't like to recommend dietarily to eat the same thing over and over again. I like rotating and alternating and just having a variety of what you're consuming, but definitely, you know, turmeric, ginger, mushroom, onion, garlic, those are things that are kind of staples and you can, play with those in such a way that they're going to give you robust flavor, but they're a part of your like foundation, you know, so you can, you know, do your sautés and you can do sauces and there's just a lot that you can do. Um, so definitely mushrooms, mushroom, mushrooms are good for your body. They're good for your immunity. They're good for vitamin D is amazing. And if there's only one reason to eat them, it would be for the vitamin D. Um, there's so much that we need um, vitamin D wise in our bodies. And that's another thing too. When we look at vitamin D, every cell utilizes D it's not a vitamin. It's a, it's a steroid. It's a compound 
that is a precursor. It's a foundational compound for a lot of different nutrients and enzymatic reactions in the body. So without vitamin D, you're going to have hormonal imbalance. Without vitamin D, you're going to have a lower immune system. Without vitamin D, you're going to have cellular aging. So there's all these things that come from that deficiency. And this is the only food source that comes with vitamin D in this plant-based and it's not, you know, an added item to milk or anything like that. This is pure nature's goodness. So go get your mushrooms. <laughs> All right, friends, thanks for tuning in today. I'm going to run. It's uh, back to school time. i uh, got to get back to Gabriel's class and um, tune in tomorrow. Again, this week, I'm going to be trying out to see if I can maintain the morning schedule. I will tell you this morning was really tough. Um, so, you know, with our new schedule and Gabriel's uh, virtual class, he has to have somebody one on one to help him. And so, um, you know, Brian and I are alternating, but definitely in the mornings are, are seeming to be pretty darn hectic. So uh, we'll see again. I will keep you abreast and kind of make an, a, a determination as this week goes by to see this will be my second full week doing this and um, and see if I can handle this. Okay. Thanks everybody for tuning in. So sorry about Instagram and the buffering and uh, definitely tune in live tomorrow. And for all of you on YouTube, thank you for tuning in. I hope all of you had a healthy and wonderful weekend. And it's always great to see you, Joanne and Pat and little blue girl. You definitely in encourage some good conversations. So I appreciate that. And Jenny, Darlene, I just want to give a shout out to everybody. Tanya, um, Aviva, thank you for so much for commenting and Purcell and Kim and Jana. I love seeing all of your faces on here. Uh, and Taryn. So thank you all for tuning in. I hope you all have a great day and I will see you tomorrow morning, bright and early. Bye everybody. Be well, be safe.